Hey again, this time in a little bit to Lisp we're going to look at destructuring bind, uh, which is very handy. It's useful for taking apart Lisp, destructuring, say, look up that term for the kind of nice fleshed out uh, description, but I just want to show you what it does. So what we're going to do, is we've got this uh, test function over here, let's just compile that with control C, control C, and it's a function that takes um, a value, it's going to be a list in our case, and it takes it apart, it's expecting the list to have two things in it. And we're going to bind the two things in that list, A and B, and then we're going to add them together. Um, actually, let's also print the list. Let's print A, and we'll print B before we do the uh, final bit. So let's do test, and let's do it correctly the first time. We're going to make a list with one and two in it. We run it, and we can see that the list was one and two. Great, that's what we expected. And then we see A has been bound to 1 and B has been bound to 2. This destructuring is taking apart this list and binding it to these variables. And it's super useful. And there's a lot of ways you can use this. And we're going to go through a few little patterns here. Um, but I do recommend looking more into the documentation to see how this can be used. Because it's super handy. Okay. Where do we go from here? So let's see what happens if we specify too little. First off, obviously, is if we pass in nil. It's going to shout at us. It's saying, hey, um, let's actually bring up the code for a bit of context. We've got an error while passing arguments to destructuring bind. Um, we got an empty list, but that's too few elements in this empty list to satisfy A, B. So it's expecting two things in there. Um, okay, so that's a problem, and that makes a lot of sense. What happens if we specify too many things? So let's say expect it exactly two, but got zero. Um, so we can guess what's going to happen if we pass in a list with too many things. It's going to go, yo, we've got a problem. There are too many elements in this to satisfy A, B. I expected two, but got three. Cool. Uh, so far, so sensible. No? Um, but all of the things we learned from Lambda lists also apply here. So um, let's have a look at some of that. Let's say that... We want to get the first thing out of here and then the rest of the things as a list. So we can say rest um, args. So we've got A and args. Um, actually, let's do B because we're, we could just follow the pattern we've already got. Um, adding them together is not going to work because we now know that B is going to be a list. Um, so what should we do instead? We will make a list out of the results. So let's compile that. Let's go over here. I'm going to clear this and we're going to call test again. Now, of course, if we call it with no arguments, we're going to get an error saying that, oh, invalid number of arguments calling the function, of course. Uh, if we pass in an empty list, we're going to um, get an error as well saying there's too few arguments to satisfy this. At least one expected but got zero. So now it's understanding that um, the minimum number is uh, that can be provided as one. Let's go and do that. Let's provide the absolute minimum. I'm going to clear this. Here's a list with just one value in it. Bam. So here's the list we passed in. That's the list. Uh, the value of A has been bound to one, so we took that out of here. Um, and the value of B is nil because there was nothing else in the list. And then we make a list of these two. We can see the list contains one and nil. Fine. Let's provide more things. Let's provide three values. Now, A is bound to one, B is bound to the rest of the list, two and three. So when we put these together in a list here, we can see the first element of the list is one, and B is two and three, so that's the second element there. Great. Destructuring is very powerful. Um, it doesn't have to just be flat lists like this. Let's say that it was formatted like this, and we want to get this to be A, this to be B, and this to be C. That's very simple. We just get rid of this rest stuff. We do A, B, and C, and we put B in parens. So this is the pattern that this has to match. So let's do C and print list of A, B, and C. If we call test, we get exactly what we wanted. So A was bound to one, B, specified here was bound to the value inside here which is two and c um, is bound to three notice what happens if i get rid of these parens and do it again 
Um, you'll notice that B is the list containing two. So the destructuring, when you put this list around it, is saying, hey, look inside that sublist and get the value that you find there. Um, of course, if we recompile this now and clear it, and let's get our kind of behavior that we were expecting. What happens if there's more elements in this sublist? So let's put a four in there. We see we get back into this problem again. Too many, um, like, sorry, too many, too many elements in this sublist to satisfy B, right? So that would be a problem. So let's say abort. And what we could do um, is just say and rest D. And then we compile it and we just won't use D. Now, because we haven't used it, SBCL is saying, hey, you define D, but it's never used. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to declare that we don't care about it. Actually, like we, we could do it a couple of ways. So we can say declare ignore D, uh, which means now it's not going to fuss. And this works. So A was set to 1, B was set to 2, 4 um, was something else in this list, and it was bound to D, but we're ignoring D, so it doesn't matter. And C was bound to 3. What I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to not ignore it. I'm going to print it out. Print D. So we can see the values. So we can see here that D is a list containing 4. And we can stick as many other things as we like in that sublist. And they just end up in D. And they're not breaking our pattern. Um, I don't want to labor on this one for too long. Because again, there's a number of ways you can use destructuring bind. You're also able to use... Um, some of the um, at directives, I can't remember the lambda directive, I can't remember the proper term off the top of my head, um, that are valid normally only in macros, are also valid in destructuring bind. It's very powerful, and I recommend you read into it. But that should be enough to get us started, to get the, get the taste of it. So I will see you next time.